Okay, I've been joined uh, by Chris Carlin uh, for today's special edition of the Health E blog. Chris, you are the new lead engagement officer for health. That's right, the new Leo. If the, you new Leo yeah, Leo, the new Leo, yeah. the, the new Laura. The new, no, the new Leo. Laura, the new Leo. And uh, you'll of course be taking over Healthy Blog as part of your uh, as part of your role here. Yep. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Okay. Well, it's a little bit of a, a strange story, I suppose, in that you know yourself, Matt. I spent uh, five, almost five, very happy years working with the VCA. Um, I was the capacity building officer, so I've got lots of experience of working with groups on their infrastructure, their quality standards, uh -huh. you know, policies and procedures, funding advice. So. The whole plethora of community support that we offer here, I've, I've done all of those things in the past. Yeah. Um, about 10 months ago, I, uh, I jumped at the opportunity to go and work for a, a local social enterprise delivering a, a wellbeing incentive, Yeah. Um, a wellbeing initiative even, and uh, I learned an awful lot about wellbeing, about health in general, about the CCG and the commissioning groups. So uh, it, it was worthwhile going and learning all that stuff. The right opportunity came up for me to come back to the VCA, which I must admit is a place I've enjoyed working most in my career. And now I get to bring all that great well-being stuff with me, so it's uh, worked out very nicely and it all fits together perfectly yeah. for this role. And I, I would argue, I don't, obviously I don't want to embarrass you, but you are a bit of a local legend because your career in the voluntary sector didn't begin in 2008 when you joined no, the VCA. No. I mean, legends are... A strong word, I suppose, but I'll take it. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I've worked in the voluntary sector in Holton for about a decade. Yeah. Um, worked for Four Estates, community development charity. They do some amazing work. Yep. And I was their community development officer for four years. Then moved on here to be capacity building officer. Climbed the ranks to be capacity team leader. And then moved on to wellbeing and before coming back here again. Yeah. And during all that, managed to fit in two years as an independent councillor at Holton Borough Council. Yeah. So you can say I'm pretty well ingrained in most aspects of the town and the borough and the great things that go on here. And it must give you a great insight because you've sat on different sides of the table, so to speak. You know what it's like to be a councillor struggling with budgets, you, know, you want to commission things, you, yeah, you know yeah. what the CCG are looking for, and those yeah, kind of absolutely. things. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it, it's. It's interesting being able to look at it from sort of the bottom up and the top down. Yeah. So, you know, I've worked on projects that had to submit evaluation to commissioners. Yeah. And I've worked with the commissioners as a councillor, kind of scrutinising the commissioned work. So I've seen what it means to a, you know, a grassroots organisation trying to capture that amazing transformation you make in somebody's life, which isn't always tangible, isn't yeah, always easy to absolutely, record. Absolutely, absolutely. But I've seen the flip side of that when you've got hundreds of these things to look through. You're making a financial decision, and quite often commissioners have to make a snap decision. Of course. So it's how do you capture that in a yeah. way that suits the commissioner, so we can tell that you're a quality organisation, yeah. without making it a mountain for you know people working at grassroots level who just want to do good work. Of course. So I think I think such would. I'm fairly well placed to be able to sit in the middle now. Yeah. Use the experience I got from you know coming upwards yes. and the experience I got from looking down. And hopefully join the two things together. Absolutely. This kind of, I think, drags me onto my next question quite nicely, really. One of your goals, a key goal maybe, is going to be to help voluntary sector groups get commission ready. Yeah. And tell us a little bit about how you think you can do that. Yeah, I mean, well, you, you said I was a voluntary sector legend. That I stand on the shoulders of giants and there was some, some great work that was done in uh, the, the, the old HVA, the whole St. Helens VCA, um, around... Um, putting together a package of tools really for exactly mm. this purpose so you know if a commissioner wants to know that you're going to evaluate it properly well, we now have our evolve system which is endorsed by the ccg right measures health measures well-being mm. measures social impact um, and very straightforward to do literally a tally chart all the technical stuff gets done behind the scenes to turn it into pie charts and great stuff like that. Right. So it's actually great for funders, not just the commissioners. Yeah. You know, it can really beef up any funding application. That's just one tool that's evolved. And um, what would you say to a group that said, I just I don't have the capacity to um, to, to do extra work 
Please yeah. don't create mountains of paperwork for me. I mean, it's, it sounds awfully cold to say this, and, and anyone that knows me will know I don't mean this coldly. No. But you will have even less capacity if you are funded. Of course. So, you know, you might be doing great work, but the environment's changed out there. Yeah. Um, and this is one way to sustain your organisation, by yeah. proving that you're having an impact on health and wellbeing. Absolutely. Um, so it's... I'm not even going to call it a necessary evil, Matt, because no. I think it's not e it's not an evil at all. You'll get, if you can get into the habit, even if you just take a snapshot of your work, yes, it's still valid. You don't have to, if you're working with ten thousand people a year, we don't expect you to evaluate ten thousand of them, you know, down yeah. to the minutia. Of course, but if you can get a group evaluation, if you yeah. can, there's lots of ways we can do it, and any group that's unsure. She just really gave me a buzz, and, and we'll talk about it. We'll find a, an elegant yeah. solution for, for their capacity level. And this has been designed with the CCG. Am I right in thinking that? So Absolutely, it's, yeah. it's, it's yeah. a product that's in everyone's language. It's, it's yeah. easy for voluntary groups to understand, but it's easy for CCG yeah, to understand. It, it's very simple stuff. And very, as I say, a lot of the, the magic of it is done behind the scenes with you know, built-in databases and spreadsheets and yes. graphs that can be generated. But... At, at the sort of front line level, it's literally a tally chart, okay. um, and it's about you know measuring baselining somebody when they first come along, or baselining a group at the beginning. Yeah, you do whatever your work is, whether that's your lunch club or you know whatever it is that you're running. Yeah, you go back to the same group, say four weeks later, and we measure again, and then we see is the work that we've done in the last four weeks starting to impact on these people. Yes, and you can keep doing that and doing yeah. that, and hopefully, yeah, then you start to see you know. Um, scientific evidence basically that shows the growth in this person's well-being, happiness, Absolutely. social yeah. aspects, the, the whole lot really. And what we do brilliantly as a sector are those soft outcomes, isn't it? It's improving people's yeah, confidence, yeah. it's all those different kind of things and they're so difficult to prove. They are, they are. I mean what I would say is having worked quite closely with the CCG yeah. up until very recently and of course we're going to be working with them closely again in this post, but the commissioners are actually very, very reasonable. Yes. So yes, they want some of that quantitative data because that's the nature of science yes. and health and medicine are scientific by nature. Yeah. But they're not monsters, and no. they would just as much like some quali qualitative evidence. Yeah. Um, so case studies, video diaries. Yeah. You know, statements from service users. So there's room for both there, but, yeah. but you have to be realistic in that if you're going to get some investments, hopefully a lot of investments, yes. then you've got to be able to show that, that, that the CCG is getting the kind of outcomes it needs. And that's what our sector does anyway. Exactly. I can't think of, a, of one voluntary sector group that doesn't impact on health and well-being. Without question. Yeah, so let's On, on both sides of the ball as well, because the people involved in the organisation's infrastructure, the volunteers... They get a great deal out of volunteering. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's helping them, and, and then well, they've got the service users or beneficiaries, yeah, or whatever yeah. posh word you want to. I mean, there's there's down. there's lots of ways of measuring these things. One way is the five ways to well-being, which yeah. was uh, a system developed by the New Economics Foundation. I think they were called uh, a government think tank about right. those things, and they got it down to five very basic things that everyone can do to improve the well-being. Yeah. And one of those is to give. Mm. So you know, it doesn't have to be financial. It could be no. helping out a neighbour. It could be volunteering. Yeah. Absolutely. Medically proven now to, to improve your well-being and yeah. therefore yeah. increase your health. Stuff we've known about for 80 years. Absolutely. Not I mean, you our, and I personally, but our organisation's yeah. uh, been... Our, our sector has been doing this instinctively. <laughs> so, yeah. so now what we're doing is giving it a name and giving yes. it a way to measure it. And, and, and hopefully it will help us to be more sustainable across yeah, the board. Yeah. Tell us a little bit about Here to Help. Will you be involved yeah, in that at all? Absolutely. I mean, I've kind of gone on a little bit about Evolve because I find that quite exciting. Mm. Um, but... There's, there's a whole range of things we've got in place now. So as you just mentioned, we've got the Healthy Times, yeah. which is a, a dedicated newsletter um, for promoting, you know, healthy good news stories, in, interesting articles around commissioning and health, yeah. um, CCG input, voluntary sector input. So it, it's a real sort of melting pot sort of yeah. news point, really. Simple, um, good old-fashioned way yeah. to say to yeah, it's a newsletter, it's not rocket science, yeah. but when you start to link that with the blog that we also do, Healthy um, blog. and of course anybody watching this would He's already right know right. about the blog, <laughs> yeah. hello people, um, but, but yeah you start to combine this and you get a, quite a substantial free promotion package if, yes. if you're you know, part of our membership. Without question. So uh, yeah, and we'll be looking to develop that even further. Yeah. Um, and the, the third healthy product coming in September? Yeah, yeah, we're... Uh, well, you, you'd know all about this, Matt, but um, 
yeah, we want to bring back the voluntary sector radio show, which I'm pleased to say is looking quite likely. Yep. Um, and as part of that, we want to include a, a section that ties in with that whole package of publicity I was talking about. So, yep. a healthy radio. Yeah. Yeah, let's have a, a section within the, the show it's where we can publicise the great work that our sector does and yeah. deal with all things health and wellbeing related. Absolutely. Here to help. Yeah. Mench, tell us about that. Okay, again, like, you know, great piece of work that was done by some of my predecessors. Yeah. Um, basically, it's it's the Argos Book of Commissioning, you know, <laughs> yeah. you know the, the laminated Book of Dreams they have in Argos. Absolutely. You get a little pen, it never works. Yeah. But, sorry, I'm getting sidetracked now, but yeah. imagine that for a commissioner. You're a commissioner and you want to, I don't know, you want to commission something that will help stop older people becoming isolated. Yes. Okay, so you could... You could ring up the usual suspects, you could carry on with what the PCT were doing. What what this Here to Help guide does is, is it's an easy reference point for commissioners to look at groups who've already reached a certain level. So they're already doing things around their quality assurance, yes. they've already got the policies in place, they're a registered company or right. a registered charity. So you've got those safeguards. So they're already a pretty yeah. strong, yeah. robust organisation. And they've been put into a, a quite a cool catalogue I think there's, there's hard copies around but there's also yeah. a digital version that anyone can access and it, it literally it, it takes a lot of the, the effort mm. away from tracking these groups down you can't expect the commissioner to be you know um, fluent with the sort of 600 groups that, that of course, we have of course, yeah. so this will let them cut to the chase and you can look at it you know various sections to see with physical fitness or mental health or so you can filter it down and it's yeah. Basically, a searchable resource for commissioners. Fantastic. And your role, will you be working exclusively in Holton or are you going to be working Holton and St. Helens? No, no, it's uh, across both boroughs. Um, I'll be looking for opportunities to where I can to join both boroughs if we can. Yeah. You know, let's, uh, let's share, share the love. Absolutely, you've got to think smart, haven't we? So, I think we, we, we've covered there getting groups commission ready and getting them the right information and providing them with platforms to promote themselves, both to the general public, to each other, and most importantly of all, perhaps to commissioners. Yeah, yeah. So how can groups, if they've got any questions, how can they best get in contact with you? Yeah, that, that's the usual uh, the usual means of communication. So you can, you can phone me on 01928 592 Yep. or you could email me at ccarlin at haltonsthelensbca.org.uk. Okay. Um, you can... Pop in and have a cup of coffee if you want. Yeah. And, uh, I usually work Mondays to Wednesdays. So. And I'll, I'll post your contact details, of course, immediately yeah, below this, this video as well. But yeah, I mean, and I've gone through a lot of stuff there, and it might seem quite dry, some of the stuff I've been talking about, but if anybody feels unsure, if anybody just wants a bit more information, anybody just yeah. wants to know a bit more about my post, I'm happy to meet with people, chat to them on the phone, whatever's easiest. Brilliant. Chris, thank you very much for taking the time uh, to speak to us today, and uh, good luck with the healthy blogging future. Thank you very much Matthew.